There's no such thing as work-life balance. None! There are work-life choices and you make them and they have consequences, period. So for those of you on YouTube that are looking for work-life balance, go f*** yourselves. I am hard. Olympic athletes say, you're as hard as my Olympic coach was when I won two gold medals. That's the kind of person you want in your life. Not somebody that agrees with you. Not somebody that says, it's all right, you can try again. You're only 26. You've got the rest of your life. That's crap. Now look at all these people in their 30s, 40s. Somebody told them that bullshit 25 years ago. Now look at them. Just look, look around the gable you're sitting with. And I don't even have my glasses on. I see bald heads, gray hair. Don't you have anything better to do than come to a thing like this on a Friday? I smell death in this room. I'm an old man. If I can get fear out of you, I'm 72 years old. I'm at least 40 years past my prime. But I guarantee you, unless there's Bruce Lee out there, I can kick the shit out of anybody in this room. But most of you don't have, and I say generally speaking, most of you don't have faith in yourself because you've got low self-esteem, no self-confidence. You look like shit. You dress like shit. And you, you blame it on the 21st century, the reason why you dress the way you do. 25 years ago, if you come to a seminar like this, you'd all be wearing suit and tie. 40 years ago, the women would be wearing hats. This is my uniform. I, I, I don't go to sleep like this, but I, this is my uniform. It has been for a long, long, long time. Dress, if you want to get money from banks, dress like the president of your country. If you, unless you're from Pakistan or India or something. Dress like the president or the prime minister of your country. You only have one time to make a first impression, kids. You come in looking like some of you, I wouldn't give you toilet paper. Most of you, I'd be embarrassed the way you're dressed. But see, Michael didn't bring me here to make, if I leave here with anybody liking me, I failed. You understand what I'm saying? I failed. I'm not here to be your friend. You want a friend, go get a fog. I'm here to drag your sorry ass across the goal line, no matter what it takes. And there's no better on the planet than me at doing it, as demonstrated by all the tens of billions I've created. Can you imagine? Just, I'm getting all excited now. Just look at this. I, even the sorriest ones in here are probably 50 million. And there's a couple of billionaires out there. I got a strain to find one, but I'm sure. The odds are there's at least two or three billionaires in this room to be. Potentially. Yes, sir. Potentially. Two or three. But would the, those two or three make the sacrifices necessary? When no. I was... What, what, what is necessary? What's the best advice? How the, to do the, it? the best advice is find something you love. Find something that can change a billion lives. Zuckerberg is a classic example. He changed more than a billion lives. Added value. Correct. Added value, you change, you make a billion lives better, potentially. You may not get to a billion people, but potentially you can make a billion lives better and the odds have just gone geometrically up for you to become a billionaire. And if not a billionaire, a whole bunch of money. When you leave here today, after the q and is over, and I've already told you everything's free on my website. I don't... I, I, and when you see me at the airport, don't come up and talk to me. Don't touch me. I don't give a shit if you live or die. My session is to drive as many of you lazy bastards across the goal line as humanly possible before I die. That's it. We'll get to that a little later. We'll get to that a little later. The 2% mindset. These are the things that you do outside the circle, but your comfort zone is based on fear, procrastination, selling for less, settling for less, regret, et cetera, et cetera. 98% of the people in this room are in the 98%, not the 2%. But I can say that in any room. QLA isn't about being a 2%er. QLA is being about a 0.0002%. Of the 7.5 billion people on the planet, maybe a half a million people are capable of doing this. So some of you say, oh, I'm glad he said that because now I don't have to pay attention anymore because I'm certainly not one of those, are, right? Right. I've given this talk a lot of times. I can read fear. Yesterday I told Michael, I smelled fear. It was like I was in a mortuary last, yesterday afternoon. All oh, you guys, your balls are sucked, well, if you have any, are sucked up in, the, in, in your cavity. Why? What happened to the freedom fighters of World War II? Fighting the, Nazis, fighting the Nazis, what happened to you? What was that, your great-grandfather? Grand, at least your great-grandfather, probably. Same question I asked in Poland. You can't find anybody with a set of balls in Poland anymore. Not possible. They're all dead, and their genes died out. No different throughout Europe, but it's no different throughout the United States either. So it's not just you. It's everywhere. We're gonna, you'll better appreciate why by the end of this hour, hour and a half. Now, you've already read, some of you, that I am the creator of Teenage Multimillionaires from scratch. 
and the, man, the um, mentee that's the CEO of the largest deal in recorded history, the $500 billion deal, Neom, the city of the future. No school, no high school, no junior high school, no college, 17 years old. Why not you? The answer is it could be you. But he's a hard-working, 140-hour-a-week worker. Out of 80, a good, straight, a good drink and a stiff kill, everybody in this room. And you're nodding your head, yeah. But some of you just settle for the good. Most guys come to me because I'm the alpha male father they never had. Most young guys come to me because they can't get their willy wet. Now what the world come to? You got to come to a raging, crazy old man, 72 years old, to get your willy wet. What's happened? Almost everything bad. That's what's happened. This young kid that came to me a year and a half ago, his goal, his dream in his life was to finish number one university champion archer in Britain. What's the best you've ever done? 20th in a regional meet, he says to me. So we set up a program and I beat him like a fanned mule. That's him receiving the first place a couple months ago in Britain. The little skinny shit. He looks like a, a little Nimrod snowflake, because he is. But he was firing six, 700 arrows a day. Most of you couldn't fire 50. So it's not just that. They, the girls tell me I'm better at knocking off weight off your big fat asses than I'm making money. I take like a change on I, you know, when I'm walking away from you and it looks like two uh, pigs in a sack. You know what I'm talking about? I just take a chainsaw and chop your cheeks off. That's one of my examples. Just one. They lose 100 pounds, 150 pounds, 75 kilos because I don't, live them, I don't allow them to not be accountable. When I say you're going to weigh yourself four times a day, sweetheart, that's what the I mean. Most of you in this room have never been held accountable for anything in your life. And look at the result. Don't you got something better to do on the weekends? I've had women come to the seminar. They talk to their mother 15 times a day. Now listen to this. 15 times a day. What possibly can you sit, tell your mother 15 times a day other than neurotic shit? What? 15 times a day! What the? If you hang out with monkeys, what happens? Your life becomes a circus. Now, with the greatest respect, kids, this is not Barnum and Bailey circus. I'm here, and what Michael, and Michael only does, he doesn't do 100% of what I say, believe me. But he does a lot more than you do. And all my mentees, I've only got one or two mentees that follow my, my, my religion 100%. And guess what? They're all billionaires, fitting me with a B. That's all. They don't have to sleep with me. They don't have to do, do holy shit to the dogs or cats. But they do everything I say. And their pay price to action is billions. I was being reminded backstage the first time somebody met me is when I almost killed myself racing dune buggies in 1999. And uh, that's when my, my clavicle and a few other things got busted up. Because I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone. And to get me out of my comfort zone, you've got to do some pushing. Because I'm not afraid of anything or anyone. Having been run over by a buffalo, water buffalo, in Australia, almost killed me. I got up off the ground like Quasimodo, chased it down for two kilometers, and killed it. I felt like a truck ran over me. It did, and I continued to push myself. We were in uh, New Zealand, and anyway, 60 mile an hour gusted winds, and a bunch of kids like you, uh, um, when the wind jumped out, when that wind stops, 20 minutes later, we're standing in line. I go give the guy at the front line, here's a hundred bucks. The wind just died down, didn't it? Yes, sir. I jump. I come back to the back of the line. There's still, oh, when that wind dies down, I'm going to jump this cocksucker. They're still waiting in that line because there's never an easy time to make a hard decision. Never. And then last year, no, earlier this year, one of you says, you know, Dan, there's a thing like, what is it? Jumping 108 stories off of a building in Las Vegas. That sounds cool. We're there and I jump. But I shouldn't have jumped because I have two new knees, prosthetic knees, artificial knees. And when you jump, you got to hit both legs at the same time. Unfortunately, I didn't. I hit with my left leg first and fucked it all up. But it's, it's, it's okay now, so don't cry for me. 99.9% .9 of all the people that have been helped by my program in 25 years, I've never met. There's some people in this audience that have actually been to my seminar. I'm not pointing them out because I don't want to embarrass them. Because I don't want you mobbing them. Because that's what happens. And the reason why the testimonials on my side don't have last names is because I learned a big lesson 15 years ago, last time I did that. There are people that had to move their houses because people like you were knocking on their door, hounding them like dogs.